welcome to the Real Country File. Ollie's taking a short break from filming this week as he's mad hectic with harvesting, but Stephen and I have got a jam-packed episode for you. I'm actually at the, uh, the Newport show today, so having a great time talking to lots of farmers and agricultural businesses. So later on, I have a chat to a new entrant to the farming industry, and Stephen visits a, visits a farm with a very interesting diversification project. Now, my kind of farm diversification this week on The Real Country File, Danny, um, not the cows that we might have seen in this building. Tell us a bit about where we are, mate. No, yeah, so we're on Farmyard Bruco, just uh, in Cochrane, just south of Lancaster. So, yeah, we used to be, uh, well, we still are a farm, but we've diversified and um, now we're a big brewery. So we're making beer rather than making milk and making hay. I know this it sounds a bit like, uh, maybe a bit cheeky, but can I have a quick look around? Is that all right? Absolutely, yeah. Right, come on, butchers. So, um, wander down into the uh, into the depths of the brewing process here, uh, Danny. Just tell us a little bit about, um, about what actually happens on the farm. Yeah, so we brew everything from start to finish and package everything ourselves as well. So we, we mill in all the malts, we buy it in all whole. Uh, it's all British malt that we're buying. Uh, we put that through and depending on what kind of beer we're doing, it's going to spend up to four weeks in tank if we're doing a lager, maybe one week if we're doing traditional beer. And then we're doing all sorts of crazy stuff as well, like barrel aged projects that we're doing. So what's, um, what's in these barrels? This is this at the minute is a, it's a Scotch ale, so it's a 9.5% heavy, we heavy, and it's in a bourbon barrel that's come from uh, America, from the Heaven Hills distillery. So that'll be coming out in, uh, for about Christmas time. But that's something a bit special. That we yeah, nine and a half percent, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, keep you warm, keep your cockles warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm used to seeing various machines on farms and you know milking apparatus and such like, but I don't think I've seen anything quite like that over there. What's going on no, that side of the building? That's right. So it's our uh, canning line. So we can everything in the house, so we can ensure that everything's super fresh and we can make sure the quality is there from start to finish. So this canning line will do about 4,000 cans in about two and a half hours. So these, so, are, these are cans down here then? Yeah, these are all the cans down here. So we're buying about 80,000 empty cans at a time. And then when we do a brew of beer, we, we, you know, we're getting about 4,000 cans. So up to now, I think that canning machine's done about 2.4 million cans in the last four years. Okay. So it's, it's uh, some do. That's some going. Yeah. There you go, there's behind the scenes. You've got a facility here, haven't you? I've come down today, you know, it's, a, it's an occasion, isn't it, tonight? Here yeah, the, absolutely. The it's, a, it's obviously a destination place. We are, we're in the middle of nowhere, looking out onto the Lake District on a nice day. But, yeah, we've, um, yeah we're doing well. It's, it's amazing how many people come out here and visit us for the good beer and for the different things we do. We've got the car meet on tonight that we're doing. We just won Best Tap Room in the UK three months ago, so it's nice to be recognised for all the hard work we're putting in. Tell, tell us a bit about the tap room, we'll go and have yeah. a look in a minute. But so what's... the tap room's open on a Thursday, Friday evening and Saturday, Sunday all day. We have all sorts of different events that we do. We have live music and street food on Saturdays and we have different workshops and art things and markets. and It's somewhere for everyone really. It doesn't matter if you don't drink beer as well, we've got a full bar of local spirits and all sorts of different stuff, you know. And I guess because you're in the middle of nowhere, loads of non-alcoholic stuff as well. For exactly, drivers. yeah. Like me tonight, I brought Mrs. Lowell along. That's it, yeah. Give her a treat out on the we got, Yeah, we've got local tea and coffee, we've got alcohol-free beers, alcohol-free you know, spirits and bits and pieces. Something for everyone. If you're not going to drink beer, we still want you here, you know. So, so you're in the middle of nowhere, got lovely fields all around, we're a brewery, and you get people coming for markets, for for the tap room, for a night out, I know stag do's as well, that kind of thing. Yeah, 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 only occasionally the stag do's and they're pretty tame, but uh, no, it's good. You get a right good mix of people. Like, you know, that's the thing about beer as well. It should be for everyone, not, you know, it's inclusive, not exclusive. You know? give, us, give us an idea of some of the names of the beer that, uh, that you brew in. Uh, what we're on at the minute, I'm on Splish Splash. Uh, we've got, I'm coming home, it's nice outside. We've had, uh, I'd rather punch a wasp nest than go bowling with you. We've got all sorts, you know. Looking back to them to like TVO 54, which is all about like, tractor fuel and things like that so it's harks to the back to the farm and then also to the future and bits of trendy stuff you know nice mix of everything it's fair to say that this part of farm diversification has really really taken off yeah absolutely and like you know the farm would be struggling to be here if it wasn't for the brewery now with the modern climate the way it is and 
yeah, the, the brewery's been great, and we're still feeding all the grains to the, the you know the cows around the corner and things like that. So we're keeping it nice and you know environmentally so, friendly. So the brewing grains go back straight to the cows in the shed next door. Absolutely, and that's pre that's pretty much the only reason we have the livestock is because we can we can feed them with all the grains we got. We're producing about five ton of grain a week, so it means they can eat all that. They're having five up meals a day, and then we've got all the solar panel next door. So like. About 50% of the power we use annually is now generated by solar, just on the power next uh, from the building next door, which is great. Hopefully, we'll do more and more of that. And it's all about sustainability and trying to keep the place going, and that's why we're here. How many pints will we uh, pull on a good night? Or a, what, what's a what's a decent weekend here on the tap room? Are you pull in probably close to a thousand pints over a wow. weekend, which is great, uh, especially like say we're where we are and you get people driving out all there and. You know, you, you know, there has to be one designated driver, unfortunately, but everyone can take it in turns. And I'm seeing more and more that you're actually in the supermarkets now as well, aren't you? Yeah. Was, uh, boobs. I bought some from this weekend. When I... Yeah, we're pretty selective with who we sell to, but Boobs are great. You know, they're always championing the independent suppliers and, yeah, they've been great with us. So, so that, that relationship with a big supplier, that's been good for you? Yeah, absolutely. And, like, you know, they're happy to pay the price as well, and as well as working with, like, we work with loads of independents and locals and stuff, so we want to make sure everyone's happy and everyone's looked after. And if uh, you had any advice for anyone starting up uh, a brewery on a farm, what would it be? Make sure you've got enough money behind you. <laughs> That'd be no. the advice. But no, it's great to get involved, but it's uh, it's a big undertaking. It takes a lot of effort, so just make sure you know what you're doing. Another episode of the Real Country File and Farm Diversification with a difference. Now, do you do something different? on your farm and would you like us to give you a bit of a shout out you can send us a little vid if you can and we'd love to show off what your diverse vacation is does it involve red ferraris or would it be a massey ferguson what a view i've got from here I'm at the edge of the Peak District near Staffordshire and I've come to have a chat with a lady who's fairly new to the agricultural industry but she's full of enthusiasm and has a number of ideas about how to make farm life work for her and her family. We're in the kitchen now and we're at Bernard's farm and we're on the edge of the, the Peak District. Beautiful views here, aren't we really? In fact, is it actually, it's, it is Staffordshire, not Derbyshire, isn't it? Because it's kind of on the border. Half of the road is Staffordshire and half of the road is Cheshire. Now the road has no road name. Right. So I think oh, gosh. We, we can pick whether we're okay. in Cheshire right. or where well, we're this in Staffordshire. Is, this is Sarah from Bernard's farm on the border of <laughs> Cheshire, Derbyshire and Staffordshire. So. I've absolutely loved just looking very briefly around your farmyard, but just give us an overview. What, what have you got on this site here and, and um, what sort of farming do you do? Yeah, well, Bernard's Farm, it, of course, isn't actually a farm. It's the name I trade as, as a sole trader. And I knew to get into farming, I was going to have to move around and be flexible and rent parcels of land on short term. So, so Bernard's Farm is that, um, that my trade name. So we've rented here, which is farmhouse, woodland, outbuildings, uh, farmyard for two years. We came in 2020. And you actually haven't come originally from a farming background, have you? So, so what, how did you get to the state that you are at now? Yeah, so um, I used to work as an assistant social worker on a child protection team for Stoke City Council. It, I wanted to find something that we could do as a family and I saw a little advert in the newspaper saying uh, weekend relief milk are wanted, full training given, rang him up, met him, um, really lovely guy and he gave me three years and I gave him three years and we taught me to drive tractors, milk cows and then at 2019 as a family we saw a little farm to rent, a private one and we went to rent that and some land as well. Where the sheep are currently up in Leek, that, that gentleman there is quite different in that he will only let that parcel of land to new entrants. Oh, so wow. he, he's a gem. Gosh, <laughs> his, yes. Yeah, he, he's an absolute real, a real gem. We're blessed to find him. And mm. We're just looking for the next opportunity now to expand what we're doing. And until that, I will work on other farms. So I've done some contract lambing work this time, as well as the, the, the dairy and the milking. Yeah. So a, apart from the difficulties of actually getting some land to work with and to put livestock on what other problems as a new entrance to farming have you come across um 
well, problems from lack of experience, you know. Mm. Um, I'm not an expert in farming, I don't mm. think I ever will be. And um, everything that I know, I've had to learn. The challenge of finding land is another one because a lot of people you're up against tendering for a parcel of land and, and often it, and often it is, you know, the safer option to go with um, someone that's grown up in the industry and I totally understand that, I really do. You know, you could do a lot of damage on someone's land if you didn't really know what you were doing. Apart from the general sort of farming activities, you've got your delivery work. Uh, tell us a bit more about all of the stuff that you have advertised on your website. Yeah, thank you. So we direct sell everything at the moment. We so do pork boxes, pork, right. okay. lamb boxes, uh, hoggit boxes as well. So spring hoggit, autumn lamb. We do beeswax candles, beeswax melts, natural soap. And then we use the sheep fleeces once it's spun and we do crafts like blankets, throws, soap bags for the soap. Gosh, and that's all stuff that you make yourself from things yeah, that you've got from the farm. Yeah. Crikey, gosh, what a range of skills that, uh, yeah, very entrepreneurial okay. mindset that you must have intrinsically in you anyway. So knowing what you know now, I mean, obviously, as you say, there's still a lot to learn yes. and, and you still class yourself as a new farmer, I suppose. Yes. Um, is there anything looking back over the last uh, sort of couple of years that you would have done differently in hindsight? Start it younger. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think start it a little bit younger so that you're not trying to juggle this whole brand new way of life. Mm. Have you found anything um, tricky or difficult to manage that you weren't expecting because you're a, a woman farmer at all or not do you think yeah yeah definitely yeah I think I think it's difficult being a lead farmer and being female and married and a mother I think it's difficult we quite often tender for farms and we've come the runner-up choice a number of times it's been a challenge it's yeah. not been easy yeah yeah. Um, I know that you document your um, activities on social media, so where can people find you online? Oh, yeah, so it's Berners Farm at Berners Farm UK, and we have a website, bernersfarm.co.uk, and when I have time, I do try and put blogs on there and, okay. and share things. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we'll put the um, link on your, um, to your website on our video um, description at the bottom and links to your social media pages as well. And uh, we'll be really interested to follow your story and, and hope that, uh, well, I'm sure that you'll make a success of things and you'll Thank keep you. being as busy as ever. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Right, no problem. Over to another farmyard now. We've been sent in another video for the Tractor Cab Challenge from Rygate Young Farmers in Surrey. As they come out. Well, it certainly looked like they had fun making that video. I think, though, every week it seems like we're getting the participants that are smaller and smaller. So just a reminder that if you are sending a tractor cab challenge video to us, then the participants do need to be proper signed up members of a young farmers club. Not quite sure how many you get in this tractor cab, but, uh, but certainly what we've just seen, 20, I think is an absolute record. Now, Stephen's been at a very smart event and got chatting to the principal of Biosco Agricultural College. 
So I have the honour tonight of uh, presenting the awards uh, for uh, Myersco uh, Agricultural College, and I've got with me Alison Robertson, uh, CEO and Principal. Is that right, Alison? That's got right. You? Got your title right for once. We thought, what a great opportunity to uh, to just catch five minutes of your time to find out the state of uh, agriculture and uh, and opportunities for youngsters. Oh, is it is it a good time to get into? Farming, agriculture, countryside pursuits if you're a youngster? It's an absolutely perfect time. It's really exciting at the moment. There's masses of jobs out there for all levels of skills. You know, whether you're an absolute newcomer coming into the profession or whether you're someone with a degree or masters, there's absolutely something for everybody. And with the carbon zero, sustainability gender being really strong at the moment and growing on farms, it's, you know, it's a fantastic time to get in and be part of that green skills agenda too. Do you have to be... I've got to ask. I've got to ask. Do you have to be... You know, have every level, every... Or do, can you be like me? And I, I went to, to my school, early doors, as a, as a young 16-year-old, to do a YTS. So basically, apprenticeships. Is that still a popular route into agriculture and countryside jobs? Absolutely. Uh, interestingly, our apprenticeship numbers have really been growing the last few years, uh, alongside students doing further education courses and degrees. Um, we're seeing a real upsurge in apprenticeships, um, but particularly seeing a really interest in um, um, courses for students coming from a wide, diverse of backgrounds as well. Um, in the past, it used to be students who grew up on farms who used to come and do agriculture, but these days it's students who've just got an interest in animals, you know, from a whole range of backgrounds, and a lot more girls coming into the profession as well. I was going to ask you that, the percentage-wise, I think there was about, when I was at Wynn Marley Campus, there was about no girls and everyone was was a lad so what what kind of percentages are we looking at at the minute boys and girls joining um, probably about on our on apprenticeships it's probably about 25 percent um are girls but on our um, full-time further education programs it's probably more like 40 percent of girls so 40 percent that's good that's good yeah, good, really good good really numbers good. Yeah. and uh, tell us some of the courses that people might not expect at my school because it is an all Pigs and farming? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not all pigs and farming. We have things like veterinary nursing and animal and equine courses. Um, we've got things like um, sports, so specialist basketball and rugby, golf, um, and also motorsports. Um, we've got a lot of engineering courses and science courses, and people don't tend to know that. So railway engineering, construction plant engineering, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's, there's something, something for absolutely everybody here. Even for me? Could we have a change of career? <laughs> oh. uh, even for you, I'm an ex Myersco student, even for you. I could come back at my ripe old age. Well, we've got, to, we've got some awards to present, haven't we, Alison? We have. We better head off, thank you. Thank you, bye. So, that's it for this week. As Stephen said earlier, we'd love to find out more about what's happening on your farm. What have you bought at the market recently? Have you got a new diversification project underway? Just send us a video and if you're filming yourself on your phone, then make sure that it's landscape layouts and not portraits. I'm going to finish off with just giving you a quick treat of a few images of the tractors in front of me. But apart from that, we look forward to seeing you next week. In the meantime, like, share and tell all your mates about us.